We are going to talk today about Cohen's principle, superposition of waves, interference, wave frame splitting, and amplitude splitting, etc. Now, before we begin the lecture, we will just talk about the history of uh, wave optics. It begins in times in 1690, and uh, science scientist behind this concept was Christian Hawking. Actually, his concept was that light is a mechanical wave. Unlike we consider nowadays that light is electromagnetic wave, but his concept was light is a mechanical wave which requires medium for its propagation. And uh, since light can travel down to earth from the sun and there is no medium in between after some time of the surface of the earth, he assumed that the entire universe is filled with a medium, a hypothetical medium which he know called ether. Ether pervades entire universe. He took the modulus of elasticity of ether very high and density very low to account for extremely high value speed of light. Several attempts actually later on were made to locate this medium ether but in vain. The latest one being in 1949 by Michaels and Morley. But he couldn't locate, they could not locate this medium ether. Still, this particular theory, wave theory, has importance in the sense that a number of optical phenomena can be explained on the basis of this theory, like interference, diffraction, etc. Now, to begin with, let us talk about what is a wave front. You know, if you consider a source in isotropic medium. Isotropic medium means the medium having similar property all around. It disturbs the particle, ether particles in this case, of the medium. And since the wave propagates with same speed in all directions, the particles at the same distance from the source in different directions will be vibrating in the same phase. You know the phase is something which gives you entire information about the state of the particle, where the particle is with respect to the mean position and in which direction it is moving. And in one complete oscillation we know from the knowledge of simple harmonic motion that the phase traveled by the particle is 2 pi, beginning from the mean position, right to right extreme position, pi by 2, back to mean position, pi, then left extreme position, 3 pi by 2, back to mean position, 2 pi. That's what we have. So it gives you the state of the particle. Now since all the particles are at the same distance from the source, and the speed of the wave is the same in all the directions, in fact, all these particles will be vibrating in the same phase and therefore, if you take the locus of these particles, locus of the particle, then this will be a line and this is what we call wave front. So, wave front we can define as the locus of all the points around the source vibrating in the same phase. Now, if the source be a point one, well, the wave front obviously will be spherical. But if you consider the point at a large distance from the source, the same, the curvature goes on changing, goes on decreasing. And if you take, consider the wave at a very large distance, you'll find that it becomes plane. And therefore, the wave front at a large distance from the point source will be a plane one. For example, the wave front from the sun striking the earth. This is a plane wave front, obviously. And this is what I have written here, at large distance from the 
point source will be, will be getting the plane wavefront. Rays are always normal to the wavefront. You can observe the rays here. You can take the rays in this direction, which are always normal to the wavefront. And the second thing about this is that wavefront always travels in forward direction, never in backward direction. Here we can see the plane wavefront. This is the plane wavefront. And the construction of such wavefronts we'll see later. If we take instead a line source, we will have each point on this line as uh, the source of spherical wavefront, which can be contained in a cylinder, and the wavefront therefore will be getting will be a cylindrical one. This is a cylindrical wavefront, just like say a cube-like can observe. Now behavior of such wavefronts when they hit the mirror lens and print is shown here. You can see the incident wavefront, which is a plane one. It has a concave mirror here and is reflected. This is the reflected wavefront. Here the plane wavefront wave hits a lens. The refracted wavefront is this one, shown by R. Here the incident wavefront hits a concave lens, which undergoes refraction and this is the refracted wavefront. And here, in this figure, you can see the plane wavefront hitting the refracting face of a print and the emergent wavefront is this one. The clue for the formation of wavefront you can take from the ray diagram because the wavefronts are always normal to the, uh, sorry, rays are always normal to the wavefront. You can take the, draw these, keeping in mind that the rays are always normal to the wavefront. Now, Huygens principle. It says that every point on a wavefront is a source of wavelength which move out with at a speed of wave itself. In other words, we can say that every point on the primary wavefront is a source of secondary wavefront. What does it mean? You can observe here. This figure only for reference, you can see this is the wavefront because we have shown just now that all these particles are vibrating in the same phase. Now, if you imagine, if you consider the speed of the wave to be v, and I take a very small time tau, the distance traveled by the wave in all the directions will be v tau. You taking the, these points at the center and v tau as radius, you can draw the arcs. You can observe these are the R and you can join these R by a line which will be giving you another wavefront because if these points are vibrating in the same phase, that this, these distances are equal, it's obvious that these points also will be in the same phase and we are getting that every point on the primary wavefront is a source of secondary wavefront. This is what Huygens principle says. And this is how we can construct the plane wavefront also. This is the incident wavefront or primary wavefront. This will be the secondary wavefront. The construction will be similar as I explained earlier. The next thing that we should be knowing before we start our discussion, superposition of wave and the phase difference. What happens if a particle is simultaneously disturbed by two waves? Just look at it. You can't Imagine the same particle at the two points in the two waves. But what happens actually, if the waves strike the particle at the same instant, we can we have shown waves of slightly different amplitudes here. Wave is actually wave is actually the displacement versus time graph. If you plot the displace main versus time graph of one oscillation, you will get one wave. So this is what we have drawn for two waves of slightly different amplitudes. We, have, we observe that if the wave, two waves strike simultaneously, a particular particle, this displacement begins at the same time, the nature of graph will be somewhat like this. And this is how they will go. You can observe I am showing the displacement due to two waves of slightly different amplitude. This is how they go back to the main position at the same time, then left extreme position and back to the main.
in time. May, I mean, which. This is what we have. So, if this is the situation, we say that the waves are in the same phase. Because there is no phase difference between the waves. And they will be set to be in the same phase. This is the... This shows actually the phase difference of pi by 2. Pi by 2. Phase difference. Two waves we have here. Here we have the phase difference of pi. You can see. And this will happen when the particle executes one oscillation, half oscillation due to one of the wave. And at this instant when the particle is at the mean position it is traveling towards left. The other wave strikes. This is how we will have. And in this case you can see the phase difference between the wave will be pi. And uh, yes, here we have the phase difference 2 pi. This, after, this happens when the particle has executed one oscillation and is at the mean position. At this instant, it is hit by another wave. This type of graph you will be getting. So here the phase difference becomes 2 pi, which is similar to this. Now, just observe. If the crest, we have the crest in the case of waves, we have crest and trough. If the crests of the two waves or the troughs of the two waves coincide, then they are said to be in the same phase and they will cause reinforcement. On the other hand, if the crest of one of the waves falls at the trough of the other, we will have cancellation and the waves are said to be in opposite phase. So, interference phenomena is actually based on, you should have idea of this phase difference, cancellation, when there will be cancellation, when there will be reinforcement, only then you can understand the phenomena of interference, diffraction, etc. very clearly. One more thing I will be talking about, coherence. What is coherence? If the phase difference between two waves be zero, constant or independent of time. Zero, constant or independent of time. The waves are said to be coherent. Just observe in this case. You can see the wave phase difference that we have here, pi by 2, is not changing. It's same everywhere. But on the other hand, if you take the wave of different, slightly different frequency, what will happen? The phase difference will go on changing continuously and they will be incoherent. Now, coherence is necessary. In coherent waves we can obtain if two waves be derived from the same source. So, coherence is a fundamental necessity for the interference to take place. Remaining thing I will discuss in the next lecture.